man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. And he answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Let's go to Lord prayer. Dear Lord and Father, we just thank you so much for this opportunity that we have. And Lord, uh, I believe there's so much in this verse, so much truth, it should shake us. It should get a hold of us. It should reveal some things. And Lord, uh, we ask tonight that you would reveal in our hearts and our minds a great truth. Lord, we just thank you who you are and what you are. We're, you're a God that loves us so much that you gave us your son. You let him bleed and let him die. But most importantly, you rose him again. And Lord, that is powerful. Only a God of your magnitude can do such a thing. A God we don't understand or could fully understand. Your love is so powerful and so great. We could learn so much from you. We just ask their Lord through tonight that you would help us to come close to you, to come to an understanding more about you and your love, because it would help us. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. So this is a very, I'm going to turn my speaker on here. Are we good to go? I'm going to turn this on, because I like to move around a lot. Is it on? Yay. All right. Um, you know, there was a time, I can say in my life, I was not a believer. And that is important. I can honestly say I was not a believer. And I do believe this. If you cannot be a believer without first not being a believer. I believe that. Yes, ma'am. You have to be an unbeliever to become a believer. Because believing is a process. It's an action. Okay? Now, there is a lot of things to be believing in. So we... As Christians, we as church members, you know, when I hear that and you hear that, hey, I'm a believer, you know what goes right in your mind? That person's saved. That person knows God. That person understood something that they needed God in their life and they needed salvation. They called upon the Lord Jesus Christ to save them. That's what we feel. That's what we think of. When someone says, I'm a believer, that's what we think. Now, Let's face the facts. There are many people that are believers, but not believer in him. Yeah. Not a believer in salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. There's many things to be a believer about, right? Now, let's just make this simple. There are certain groups or divisions of people that believe in certain things. Yep. There is nothing more important to believe in than salvation through Christ Jesus in God. There's nothing more important to believe in. But yet, there are people today that are believing in something. They desire to believe in something so much. They want to fight for something. They want to live for something. They want to do things for something. It, but it's for the wrong something. <laughs> I don't understand it. It's just, it makes you go, what are they doing? I'll give you an example. Now, this is kind of crazy, and this is kind of recent, or relatively recent. You heard of these people that believe that the world is flat. Yeah. You know, and they're, they're so hold on to this, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. And they're willing to fight for it and argue about it and all sorts of things. And what good is it going to do if, it, if it's true or not anyway? Yeah. Nothing. They just want to argue. They just want to, you know what it is? It's not being submissive. It, it's basically saying, hey, if I can believe in this, I'll tell you right now, I know I need to believe in him. Amen. Okay? They will find any excuse not to believe in the right thing. 
It just, you know what we should do? We should collect them all together, put them on a jumbo jet, take them up 30,000 feet, and show the window to them. You can see the curvature of the earth from every angle. <laughs> That's not because it's flat. It makes no sense. But here we got people, they're willing to believe in anything. Anything. Just, just you know why? I'll tell you right now. This is why they want to believe in almost anything. To have purpose. That, that, that's, it. that's exactly it. They need purpose in their life. Something that they feel like they, they can fight for or work hard for or argue about or whatever. And I just don't understand that. So uh, let's go back to you believe things and you don't believe things based on certain factors. You know, you ever heard that saying? I, don't, I won't believe it until I see it. Wow. Who knows? You are, and I've probably even said it. I don't believe until I see it. And I'm going to bring you, some of you all maybe heard us say this before, but um, it's the ant theory. <laughs> and you might, you, most of you probably already heard me say this before. You know, I was in my uh, carport one, one night and cooking burgers and such, and as I was cooking, Saw this big old ant, and I tell you, Alabama's got some ants. <laughs> Sorry, they got some big ones, they got some orange ones, they got some that look like they have glitter on. I don't know what that's all that about, but I didn't know what that stuff was until I got here. And I'm sitting here cooking, flipping burgers, and I'm like just waiting, and here comes this ant. And I put my foot out. No, I'm not going to let you go there. <laughs> that ant just tries to go around. He's very determined, wants to go a certain place, a certain direction, and I put my foot back in. And, uh, and I got to thinking, you know, that ant's not afraid of me. And I got to thinking, you know, that ant doesn't even know I exist. All that ant sees is the sole of my shoe and knows it's in his way. And this is the reason why. I'm too big. I'm way more of a definition of a thing than it is. I'm too big. It doesn't even understand what I am. It doesn't understand my capability. I mean, I could have just squished them. I could have done that. Or I could have picked them up, turned them out of the way, and put them down somewhere else. It has no clue what my capabilities, what my feelings are, what my, you know, passions are, nothing. It doesn't know I even exist. But I do. Hey, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not real. Okay? Yeah. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean you can fully understand it, too. Look, you know what? If you can see it, I just want to make this known. If you can see it, that just put whatever you're seeing at your level. Okay? If you can see it, you can understand it, and you're in the same realm as whatever you're seeing. We're on the same playing field. God is a whole different entity than we are. That should be comforting. To know we have a God that we can't see, because he's that much more than we are. He's the creator of the universe, Amen. right? Yeah. And because of that, we have a savior and we have a comforter. And he knows everything. Amen. And he's made everything. You know what? I'm glad I can't see that. Amen. And that's just a, a certain perspective that we ought to have. And I can honestly say that, you know what? I was blind. And we hear that preached, we hear that teach and whatever. I was blind, but now I see. We have songs over it, right, about it. But you know what I think we leave out is, I was blind. 
and I do believe this, it is just as important to know that and identify that we can say, I was blind. And I do believe that you have to be blind for you to see. I really do. Because here's the thing. There are people I do believe that they, they love the Lord. They call upon the Lord as far as, you know, during his, their life and or they think so. And they can honestly not say, I was blind. They, they, I believe that they can't honestly say, I was blind. They would say, I've always been a good person. I, I always go to church. I always saw. I always did what I was supposed to do. But when you say, I was blind, what you're saying is, I was wrong. And there's a minutes to that. I was blind. I used to be an unbeliever. But that has changed. My eyes have been opened. You know, it's interesting where I remember shortly after I got saved, I mean very shortly after I got saved, I saw things differently. And it is such an amazing experience. <laughs> I never saw it even coming, Brother Jimbo. I'm like, I looked at flowers differently. I didn't think, oh, these are just for girls. You know, <laughs> I said, this is something God made, and it's beautiful. And I, I just looked at things differently. And I said to myself, God made that, and it's because of him that this is the way this is. And it has nothing to do with chance. Yeah. But I used to not think that. And when I see everything now, I go, it's because of him. He allowed this to all come about. And that's given him credit. But I didn't always think that way. I was blind. Now, I, uh, I have a good friend, y'all, some of you might have remember me talking about him before. Um, i known him several years. He works on base with me. His name's Calvin. Last name's Lee, Calvin Lee. How can you forget that? <laughs> Calvin Lee is uh, legally blind. Now, he, uh, he doesn't wear glasses like most blind people do. He doesn't see total darkness as, you know, truly blind people does. But he, uh, he's legally blind, and he does work on base. He's got these huge monitors. This was, you know, 10 or 12 years ago, huge monitors. And he gets this close to it. So he can see a little bit. It takes him forever to do something simple because he has to take his thing and scroll around so he can see what he's doing and, and finally get something done. But it takes him a long time. But, you know, he, he cannot see his hand in front of him. He can't do it. He can't see my hand or it's that bad. He has a cane, a walking stick, and uh, I got to know him. And I learned some things, things I just never thought of before. So, you know, we see things, and we remember things because the things we see. And uh, you're probably thinking, well, what are you talking about? Well, thank you, sir. So, uh, one thing I learned about him is that uh, he knows his way around the office. But he knows it differently than I do. So he's like, all right, I'm in cube one, cube two, <laughs> cube three. You know, he knows where all that is, and, and he's got to memorize something. And then he uh, will have a meeting somewhere, for example. And I'll let him know. Anytime he's near me in the group or whatever, I say, hey, Calvin, how you doing? And he goes, hey, hi, Steve. And I want him to know I'm here for you. Because he may not show it, but he needs our help. And by doing that, what ended up happening is, here's an example. I'll be at my desk, and before you know it, there's Calvin right there. You go, 
Steve, you here? Yeah, yes, Calvin, I'm right here. He goes, hey, uh, can you help me? When we were having that meeting, who was that girl that was off to my right? And I'll say, well, that was Cindy. He goes, oh, okay, Cindy, all right. Where does she sit? You know, I can't tell him. I can't tell him where she sits. I have to show it to him, in a sense, right? I guy said, well, come follow me. You go there, okay. And he knows where he's at. Like one, two, two, cube, four, cube. I said, she's right here, I'm right. Go in, first one on the left. She sits right here. He goes, okay, I got it. Thank you. It's like, wow, it's interesting. But he comes to me because he knows he's, he can. And he knows I'm not going to make fun of him. He knows I really want to help him. And I would have never known that unless I thought about it, first of all. But um, I learned things. I care about him. He's a good guy. He's smart. So uh, I remember one day, I'm in the bathroom, men's bathroom. I'm all finished my business, and I'm washing my hands, and here comes Calvin. And you know what I did? Hey, Calvin, how you doing? I want him to know who's there so he feels more comfortable. And he'll come in, you'll go, hey, Steve, pretty good. Yes, yeah, Steve. And then I said, you know, and finally, I just, I just had this thought. Good about you. I said, Calvin, uh, have you accidentally ever walked into a woman's room? He goes, yes, but I didn't see anything. <laughs> Boy, I lost it. And you know what? He felt even more comfortable. And you know what? And then soon after that, right, we'd come to my desk and we'd sit down and he starts telling me all these stories. It's so funny. <laughs> and he said this one time, he's like, he comes into work with his mail. This is a few years back. He told me this story a few years back. He would come into the work with his mail. And it was this friend of his named Linda. And she, he said, uh, hey, Linda, here's my mail. Can you help me with it? So he gave her this letter. And she starts reading it. She opens up starts reading it. And he's like, Linda, what is it? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Linda, what is it? She's like, oh, hold on just a second. He's like, Linda, what is it? She goes, it's a quote for car insurance. And he goes, Linda, I don't have car insurance. She goes, you don't have car insurance? Everybody's got to have car insurance. My goodness, what are you doing? He goes, Linda, I don't have a car. <laughs> She's like, oh, Lord. <laughs> you know, there are certain things and attributes about us when we're blind that are different. When we're blind, we need help. There are so many blind people out there of the truth, and they need our help. They need someone to show them the way. I remember, uh, I love this part. You all, some of y'all remember this uh, evangelist would come in, he's totally blind. Where's the dark glasses? You know what I'm talking about? He would come and he would sing. Woo! I don't know if you all remember that. He would sing and he would get up and preach. And one night he was here and it was kind of stormy out a little bit. <laughs> he got at the pulpit and he said, by the way, the power grabs out, don't worry, I got it all memorized. <laughs> wow. They got to do things differently. They need our help. He was lucky to have a wife that saw all through that about him and his ailment and would walk him and take him wherever he needs to go. Wow. We can learn some things. I want to go through this verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. This is just... These are things that we've gone through and gone over. The pastor's gone over them. Uh, in fact, just recently, in fact, um, I remember seeing him go through this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it says, But their minds were blinded, 
For unto the day remaineth the same veil and taken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. Now, there's many depictions of a veil, whether it's on your face, whether it's on a tent, per se, whether it's a door. But what is that veil about? The veil is about not seeing through it. Not be able to see what's on the other side. And it's really about understanding. So let me ask you something. What is this? It's truth. Am I right? This is truth. But you know what's more powerful? Not only that I can take this and give it to somebody, but because I'm a believer and I now see... It's right here. Amen. It's right here. Because if it's not right here, I will not be doing this. And I will not be opening my mouth. And I might not shed a tear. Because it needs to be in here. And I'm fascinated about this whole subject that in the Old Testament, before Christ came, died, and buried, and rose again, and now, without the giving of the Holy Spirit, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. All they had was this. Second. But that's, they didn't have what we have. Now, I don't understand it, but I'm glad I got it. I'm not going to honestly say, I was blind, but now I see. And I believe that spirit makes me see a whole lot better. So I, I'm fascinated by the fact that in the Old Testament, they were not in with the Holy Spirit. They're not. They have the word, but here's the thing. The word is in us through the spirit. And I think we fail, one thing that we recognize that, and we fail to understand it and to use it. And John, chapter 12, verse 40 says, He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. So he's talking about Satan, the devil. He is out to blind people in more, more efficiently, I, I suppose you can say, he's to keep them blind. He doesn't want anyone to get a glimmer, little peak, little shine through. He wants to make everything so messed up. You know, I, I said this before. The devil doesn't care whether you believe in God or not. Does not care. All he needs to do is get you to not understand how you can become a child of God. That's right. he, he just wants to cloud that all up. And I'm going to go back a little bit to where he said, I was blind. But there are many people that cannot say that. Because this is what he's done. He's clouded everything. He's blinded people so much. Hey, Jimbo. You want to get saved? Clean your act up. You know how many people think that? Yeah. You know how many people think, you know what? I'm not going to get saved. I'm not going to follow the Lord because I have sin in my life. And you know what they do think? And I'll tell you, I met them. I met several people that thought this. I've got to straighten my stuff up. I need, I need a cleansing. I need, I need to get rid of my sin. Everybody does. You can't do it. And that's what the devil wants you to think. You're not good enough, Brother Jimbo. You can't be with God. I know what you've done. I know who you are. That's exactly what he wants. And there, there are devices. There's information. There's all these strategies that he has going on. So we think we can't be with God because we are the way we are. Because your eyes aren't open yet. 
And now that our eyes are open, we can see very clearly. We need to repent. We need to repent. And I believe that's pretty much saying, I was blind. I want to admit that I need the Lord. I need his help. I need his glory. I need salvation. You know, because I tell you what, you can't clean yourself enough. You can't say enough prayers of any kind enough. You can't do it. And the devil wants you to think that. That's what you need to do. And I've seen this before, and you also probably know what I'm talking about. I know so many people that they, they are so hooked on that. And some, I believe, got saved. But they still have this thing in their head. They think, you know what? I messed up again. I better get saved. Whoa. Whoa. What you just said is, God, whatever you did the first time wasn't good enough. Right. Right. And the only reason that they keep thinking that is because they're not in his word and studying properly to know how much he did save you. Amen. And here's the thing. When I got saved and when you got saved, you got everything you needed. Amen. It's all there. Amen. But there is a veil. The Old Testament, Jews, they could not understand this concept that we have God in us. I would think they would be jealous. <laughs> I think I would have been jealous of myself if I was a Jew at that time. To know that God dwells in you and we don't even act like it. He's right here and we fail at him. And we act like we're blind. But I used to see things differently. I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. And whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. That's just another scripture right there that just shows you that he is the light. And you know what, something? Without light, you can't see. <laughs> you can't do it. I've tried it. I turned the lights off. Can't see anything. <laughs> it's the same way with Christ's light. It's a, just a spiritual content. It's a spiritual blindness. It's a spiritual, I can see. But you can't do it without his light. Right. You cannot understand now. And like I said, uh, when I was blind, I saw and thought things differently. And there's things that we can probably think about and start putting in categories of what I think differently now because I do now see because I am saved and I have the Spirit of God. And I'll tell you one thing is, you know that phrase, uh, it's better to give than to receive? I think of that a lot. Because I believe once I got saved, I understand now how true that is. Now, the young folks, I don't think they understand that very much. They, they, they want their goodies. They want their toys. They want their things. But when you mature in Christ, you know, I, you know us that are parents, we know something they don't know. It's better to give than to receive. I can honestly say that even my kids, when I give them a gift and I see their excitement, whatever, they have no idea how I feel and how much joy that is. And I can honestly say that. That when I got saved, I, I know and understand it's better to give than to receive. And I think that's true. Amen. You know, and I got to thinking about this. We're, we're almost done. I got to thinking about this. What does God give? Eternal life. What is better than eternal life? Nothing. 
That is the whole cake with the cherry on top and a scoop of ice cream. It, there's nothing more than you can get that's better than that. It, it, you got it all. Everything. You are now adopted. He sees you as a son, a daughter. His flesh, his blood. I mean, you got it all. So I got to thinking about that. I wonder how God, the, our Lord, our Father feels when we get saved and he gives them eternal life. I wonder how he feels. Because it's better to give than to receive. Yeah. And you guys say, I don't know, Brother Jim. Brother Jimbo, I, I got eternity in heaven with him. I get to see the crystal sea. I get to see the emerald. I get to see all this glorious stuff, the street of gold. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Can it really be better yeah. than to give? We can argue this, but I can prove this. It's better that he gives. Because yeah. you know why? We don't act like it was better for us. We don't do what we should do. We don't live the way we should live. We don't honor him the way we should honor him because we have eternal life and because we do have salvation. But if we did act like we did, that would be a different story. Yeah. I can prove it. We don't live like we have salvation. We don't live that we, like we have a savior. We don't live like we have a father that gave a son. So I do believe it's better that he gives than what will you receive. Because it's all about how we think and understand and how we act upon it. It's important. I can honestly say I was blind. But now I see. And here's this man in this story, physically blind, but now can see. And he was grateful for that. He was grateful for that. There's, there's so much more you can learn about, about this story, about this person, and that he wanted to thank the Lord. And you know what? That's something we should be doing every day. Because I now see, Lord, I'm going to thank you. I want to thank you. I can see things differently now. I can see the glory that you have in things that you've created. But more on top of that, and I think, that, I don't know why, in the last five to ten years, it, it really presses upon me to give God the credit and glory that there is so much that he is doing that I don't know about. There's so much that he's got his hands in and he's making things happen for our benefit that we'll, we will never know about or understand. But I know he's doing it. I can see that. Because I understand that. I know that's what he does. Because I don't think that certain things happen for no reason. There's reasons for things. And it's for our benefit and he's doing it. I, uh, my, I, was, I mentioned that my nephew just uh, graduated. He's engaged. He's going to be married soon. And uh, so as a Christian, um, I know that uh, my uh, nephew, Zach, I tell, I'm just being honest, when he was younger, <laughs> he was out of control. I mean, I'm trying to think of the right word for it. But and all I say, me. It's about me. That was him. And I remember um, it'd be time to, to eat. Oh, man, he rushed. I want the first piece. I want the biggest slice of pizza. I mean, it was, man, I mean, he made it known. And my sons were like, whoa, what's going on? But, man, he, I mean, that was him. Time and time again, over and over again, that's what he did. He doesn't do that anymore. 
things are different. And I think he thinks now it's better to give than to receive. And you know, as his marriage evolves, family, maybe children evolve, I'm willing to bet he's going to understand that too. It's better to give than to receive. And he does that. Just think about it. We are a save. We have eternal life. We have everything. We can't get anything more. You might get stuff on this world, but you're not going to get any more when you're in heaven, right? I mean, it's, we could talk about it for thousands of years, right? And we should have in our heart and desire. Let me give what I already have. Let me give. And you can't do that if you don't see. You don't see what's in store, what God gives us. And what's in store for others to have as well. Wow. We have a God that deserves. And every time I think about another person getting saved, I praise the Lord. Not just for that individual. I say, Lord, you deserve that. He needs souls in heaven to work. He deserves souls in heaven forever and ever to worship him. I don't know the details of that. I understand that completely. I don't. But I know he deserves it. We have a God, a Father, that deserves it. And with that, I'll close out in prayer. Brother uh, Gonzalez is going to come up and go through the prayers. Let's pray. Lord, Lord, Father, just thank you so much for who you are and what you are. And Lord, uh, I can honestly say I was blind. And I admit to that. And I understand why that's important. And Lord, uh, there may be some here tonight may not understand this. Maybe they're blind. Maybe they need uh, to see some things. But Lord, uh, I'm just so thankful that You as a God has provided everything that we need and so much more than we even understand. Lord, help us to call upon you if we haven't seen yet. And Lord, those out here that that do see, that do have the knowledge and have the Spirit of God within them because they called upon you, Lord, we can still learn more. And as lessons come within a week or two, uh, we're going to learn more about that, Lord. And I do believe it's important. The knowledge of Jesus Christ is so important. Thank you for this story. Thank you for this uh, situation of this, this man that was blinded but now can see. This miracle, we thank you for showing us there's something real here. There's something deep down that, that is such a great truth. And help us to admit if we need to see and admit that we can't see if we don't. So, Lord, thank you for this time. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, brother. Um, Lisa, I hope that you have written down the